The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Thomas and the birthday picnic. All the engines on the island of Sodor were very excited. The Fat Controller's mother was coming to the island to celebrate her birthday. The engines chuffed up and down to get ready for the big day. On the big day, the Fat Controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. I have decided to take my mother on a birthday picnic. I want to show her somewhere special. I can take you to Shen Valley, sir, tooted Thomas quickly. That is a very good idea, Thomas, beamed the Fat Controller. Later, Thomas puffed proudly into Natford Station with Annie and Clarabel. He was very excited. Sir Topham Hat, Lady Hat and Dowager Hat were waiting in their birthday best. The station master loaded the picnic baskets and the biggest birthday cake Thomas had ever seen. Thomas smiled. But the Fat Controller's mother wasn't smiling. She looked very stern. She made Thomas feel nervous. Just then, Percy chuffed into the station. You'll have a wonderful time, peeped Percy. Thomas stopped feeling nervous. This was going to be the best birthday picnic ever. Thomas whooshed and whooshed through the countryside. Annie and Clarabel clattered and chattered. Everyone was happy. Finally, they arrived at the beautiful Shen Valley. There were woods and streams and green fields. Thomas was sure the Fat Controller's mother would like this. It was the perfect place for a picnic. The Fat Controller, his wife and his mother looked at the fields, but they didn't smile. The fields had just been ploughed into thick brown mud. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. We can't picnic here, said the Fat Controller sternly. You'll have to have another idea, but hurry up. My mother's getting very hungry. Thomas thought very, very hard. And then he set off. Thomas pumped his pistons even harder to get to the other side of the island. He was puffing to the castle. This is my best idea yet, chuffed Thomas. At the castle station, the Fat Controller spoke to the station master. Thomas, said the Fat Controller, the castle is closed for redecoration and repairs. Please have another idea and be quick about it. So Thomas set off from the castle. He rocked and he rolled, he huffed and he puffed. The Fat Controller, his wife and his mother were bounced and bumped inside the carriage. Thomas went faster and faster, trying to have another idea. The Fat Controller leaned out of the window. Enough, Thomas, he boomed. Stop! Thomas huffed to a halt. Where are you taking us now? I don't know, peeped Thomas sadly. I've run out of ideas. Then we will have to cancel the birthday picnic, boomed the Fat Controller. It's too late. Lunchtime has passed and my mother wants to go home. Thomas hoped he'd have another idea before he got to Natford. 
But as he pulled in, not one idea had dropped into his funnel. The fat controller, his wife and his mother got off the train. And with a low toot, Thomas chuffed sadly back to Tidmouth. When Thomas got back to the sheds, the other engines were waiting. They had heard that Thomas's good ideas had gone wrong. Nothing went right, moaned Thomas sadly. Don't worry, peeped Percy cheerfully. I'm sure the fat controller's mother enjoyed the cake. The cake, gasped Thomas. I steamed off before they could unload it. Now the fat controller's mother won't even be able to have her birthday tea. Thomas let out a big whoosh of steam. Maybe if I think hard enough, said Thomas, another idea will come. Of course it will, peeped Percy. <laughs> Percy wanted to whistle cheerfully, but his whistle wasn't working. It was blocked with quarry dust. Blow hard, Percy, like this, said Gordon, and he blew a long, low note. I find two toots better, chirped Emily, and she gave two high toots. No, 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 slow and strong is always best, tooted Henry. That's it, Thomas toot tooted, our whistles. The other engines were puzzled, Thomas beamed. I've had another idea. The fat controller, his wife and his mother were sitting sadly in the living room. When the station master rang, they were all to go to Knackford Station. Thomas and the other engines had a special surprise. When they arrived at Knapford, they could hardly believe their eyes. There was bunting and balloons, fine food and the birthday cake. Thomas gave one toot and then, one after the other, the engines hooted and tooted, whistled and blew happy birthday to you. And for the first time all day, the fat controller's mother smiled from ear to ear. This is the best birthday picnic ever, smiled Dowager Hat. Thomas, boomed the fat controller, this is your best idea yet. Thomas was delighted. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that? puffing down the track. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a busy, bustling day on the island of Sodor. All over the island, steam engines and diesel engines were happily working together. The fat controller came to see Thomas. The quarry has an important order to fill, said the fat controller. I need an engine that is both useful and reliable. I won't let you down, sir, whistled Thomas proudly. But when Thomas arrived at the quarry, he had a nasty surprise. Oh, it's you, oil diesel. What are you doing here? I'm here to help Mavis, puffed Thomas proudly. Steamies can't help, not like a diesel, he sniffed. That's not true, said Thomas crossly, and he began working at once. But diesel was soon up to his old tricks. 
First, he shunted Thomas under the hopper. Cinders and ashes, spluttered Thomas. Then, when Thomas let off steam, Diesel sniffed loudly. What's that horrible smell? he cried. Oh, it's just a stinky old steam engine. How rude, exclaimed Thomas. No wonder the fat controller is thinking of scrapping steamies. I don't believe you, huffed Thomas. But he was upset. That night, Thomas stayed at the quarry, but he couldn't sleep. What if Diesel is right? Thomas said sadly. What if the fat controller scraps all of us? Thomas was worried. The next day, Salty had arrived. Ahoy there, me eyes. Fresh diesel from the mainland. After he had been refueled, Diesel's engine started to rev faster and faster. Aha, he chuckled. This new fuel makes my axles tingle. Coal doesn't make my axles tingle, sighed Thomas. I wish I could have fresh fuel. Even Mavis was excited by the new fuel. Oh my, she said. Thomas was feeling left out. Soon Diesel was showing off. I'm the fastest engine in the world, he boasted. Look at me go! Suddenly, Diesel's engine coughed. Then it started to splutter. Black, smelly smoke billowed from his exhaust. I feel sick, wailed Diesel. Mavis started billowing smoke too. So do I, she groaned. The quarry manager was upset. It's the new fuel, he cried. Water must have leaked into the tanks. Soon, all the other diesels had broken down. Harry, Bert, even Salty had ground to a halt. So the fat controller telephoned the quarry manager. And the quarry manager came to see Thomas. You are to collect fresh diesel from the fuel depot. Right away, sir, whistled Thomas. And he steamed out of the quarry as fast as he could. At last he arrived at the fuel depot. Give me all the clean fuel you've got, Thomas cried. This is an emergency. We'll soon have you loaded, said the workman. Thomas was soon loaded with trucks carrying fuel drums. The fuel drums were very heavy. Thomas pushed with all his might. His pistons creaked and his wheels squeaked. And he kept on puffing. Thomas trundled all over the island with fresh fuel for everybody. For Salty, for Harry, and for Bert. Thomas was feeling very tired, but he still had one more delivery to make. At the quarry, all work had stopped. Diesel was as green as a leaf. Mavis was feeling very glum. Then they heard a wonderful noise. It was Thomas. He steamed into the quarry with one final puff. I made it, he cried. Mavis and Diesel had all the bad fuel drained out of their engines and all the good clean fuel poured in. Marvellous, sighed Diesel. Thank you, Thomas, purred Mavis. 
Soon the quarry was clattering with the sound of work. And finally, the important job was done. The fat controller arrived on board Percy. Well done, Thomas, boomed the fat controller. You have saved the day. You are a really useful engine and a credit to the railway. Thank you, sir, puffed Thomas proudly. And even Diesel had to admit that Thomas is a very special engine. Even if he is a steamy. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that? puffing down the track. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a beautiful autumn day on the island of Sodor. All the engines were working very hard. The fat controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. He had exciting news. Gordon is to take the new mayor of Sodor on a special tour of the island, he announced. Gordon was thrilled, but then he had a thought. Who will take the express, sir? he asked. The other engines were excited. Pulling the express was an important job. Everyone wanted to be chosen, but the Fat Controller chose Emily. When the Fat Controller left, Emily was very happy, but Gordon wasn't impressed. The Express is the longest passenger train on the island, he sniffed. I always cross the island twice by tea time. You'll never do that. I've got big wheels and I'll do my best, said Emily. Big wheels don't make a big engine boasted Gordon. Everyone knows I'm the best. Thomas thought Gordon was showing off. Twice before tea time, he puffed. That will be hard. But Emily wasn't listening to Thomas. I'm going to be as good as Gordon, she said eagerly, and she steamed away as fast as she could. Emily puffed into Knapford Station. She was looking forward to taking the express. But it was very, very heavy. Bus, my buffers, she gasped as she slowly pulled out of the station. But she pulled away too soon and left the brake coach behind. Emily puffed with all her might. She was determined to be fast. Emily crossed the island once in good time. I am as good as Gordon, she puffed proudly. Emily had to wait for Edward at the crossing. Edward went as fast as he could, but it wasn't fast enough for Emily. Hurry up, slow coach, she cried, or you will make me late. Edward felt sad, but Emily just steamed on. Emily stopped in Maithwaite Station. The express was a guaranteed connection with Bertie the bus, but Bertie hadn't arrived. He'd had a flat tire and was running late. Emily tried to wait. She counted to ten twice but she felt as if a boiler would burst. I'm going to be the slowest engine on Sodor, she cried, and it's not my fault. And she puffed away. When Bertie arrived, Emily had already left. 
Emily needed to take on water. But James was at the water tower. He was pulling the slow goods train. Emily wanted to go first. It doesn't matter if you are late, she said. You must wait your turn, said James crossly. Express trains don't wait, said Emily. And she left without taking on water. Emily went faster than ever. Her carriages rocked and rolled, and her passengers were biffed and bumped and bounced. Finally, Emily could see Brendam docks up ahead. Twice before tea time, she puffed happily, I am as good as Gordon. Then there was trouble. Emily slowed down. What's happening to me? She cried. She went slower and slower. Emily had run out of water. She huffed and puffed, but she had no steam left. Finally, Emily came to a complete stop. The Fat Controller arrived on board James. He was very cross. You should have waited, said the Fat Controller, and now you have caused confusion and delay. You left the brake coach, stranded Bertie's passengers and bumped your carriages. You must learn to be more patient. Emily knew the Fat Controller was right. She felt very bad. She was only trying to be as good as Gordon. I'm sorry, sir, she said sadly. James pulled Emily into the docks. Then he went back to collect the express. Now I need an engine to take the slow goods train, said the Fat Controller. Emily had an idea. May I take it, sir, she said, if I promise to go slowly? The Fat Controller thought it was a grand idea. The slow goods train needs lots of patience, he said. Emily was pleased. She was determined to do a good job. So after she took on water and lots of coal, Emily buffered up to the slow goods train. She stopped at all the right stations. She let all the other engines go first. She stopped at a signal. Thomas was waiting there. I am learning patience, Emily puffed. But if only I could learn it faster, she cried. Thomas had to laugh. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that? puffing down the track. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was full steam ahead on the island of Sodor. All the engines were running on time. They wanted to finish their work quickly, because tonight was Halloween. The engines love seeing the children in their Halloween costumes. 
and the engines loved to hear tales of ghostly engines and scary steam trains. That evening, the Fat Controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas and Emily, you must go to the smelter's yard, he said. An important delivery of iron must be collected right away. Yes, sir, they puffed. Percy thought the smelter's yard was spooky. He was worried about his friends. Look out for ghosts, he whistled nervously. It is Halloween. There's no such thing as ghosts, Thomas said cheerfully. It's just silly make-believe, added Emily. And they steamed off to the smelter's yard. The sun was setting and it was getting dark. Imagine being scared of Halloween, puffed Thomas. Oh, the smelter's yard, sniffed Emily. Pa, added Thomas. Thomas and Emily enjoyed feeling brave. But when they got to the smelter's yard, it was very spooky. Oh my, whispered Emily. Oh dear, hissed Thomas. They puffed slowly through the piles of jagged steel and twisted scrap. The air grew hotter and smoke grew thicker. Harry and Bert were lurking nearby. The two diesels saw the chance to scare a couple of steamies. When Thomas and Emily rolled by, they moaned and groaned. It sounded spooky. What was that? snapped Emily. You said there was no such thing as ghosts. Silly make-believe, you said, gasped Thomas. Suddenly, a truck began to shudder and shake. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. Help, wailed Emily. That's a ghost. Let's get away from here. They didn't know Harry and Bert had been bumping the flatbed's buffers. The two naughty diesels were having great fun. Thomas and Emily pulled up to the smelting shed. They gasped at the ghostly shadows and fizzing sparks. Their wheels felt as if they were frozen, but they had to go inside. I hope the ghost hasn't gone in there, quaked Thomas. Me too, quivered Emily. And they both rolled slowly into the smelting shed. Inside, chains clanked and strange shadows danced across the walls. Must be brave, must be brave, Thomas puffed. But it was spooky. Emily was turning round ready to shunt some trucks. A great whoosh of sparks lit up the shed. That's my buffers, cried Emily. Emily was scared. She didn't notice the huge white tarpaulin. It fell, covering her from funnel to footplate. The ghost, it's got me. She steamed away as fast as her pistons could pump. Thomas thought Emily was the ghost, and he raced out of the smelting shed. The ghost is after me, cried Thomas. Harry and Bert thought Emily was the ghost too, and they raced away. Thomas was right behind them, and Emily was right behind Thomas. The ghost has got me! Harry, Bert, Thomas and Emily raced towards Tidmouth's sheds. Tidmouth's sheds was quiet and peaceful. All the engines were fast asleep. Thomas's whistle soon woke them up. It's Thomas! cried Percy. Something must be wrong! Suddenly he saw Thomas, Harry and Bert racing into the yards. 
Stop! he cried. Harry, Bert and Thomas applied their brakes. They stopped just in time. The ghost is after us, whistled Thomas. Percy was scared, but just then Emily raced under a signal and the tarpaulin flew off. That's no ghost, said Percy. That's Emily. The engines didn't feel scared anymore, but they did feel foolish. The fat controller arrived wearing his pyjamas. What is all this fuss and bother, he boomed. It has caused confusion and delay. But, sir, cried Thomas, the flatbeds were rattling. And we heard moaning, said Emily. And groaning, added Thomas. The fat controller looked at Harry and Bert. Do you know anything about this? he asked sternly. It was us, sir, Bert mumbled. For your punishment, you will go back and collect the iron at once, said the fat controller. Yes, sir, said Harry and Bert, and they rumbled away. Whenever Thomas and Emily went back to the smelter's yard, they knew there was nothing to be scared of. After all, there is no such thing as ghosts. It was all silly make-believe. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a crisp, cold winter day on the island of Sodor. Snow lay thick on the ground. The engines were working extra hard. James was pulling the slow goods train. He had stopped at a signal. Percy pulled up alongside, carrying the mail. Hello, James, said Percy. Then the signal changed to green. Goodbye, James whistled Percy, and he was off in a flash. I was here first, grumbled James. Why do I have to wait? The mail train is more important than slow goods, said his driver. Later, when James stopped for water, Thomas was already in front of him. I have to go first, said Thomas excitedly. I'm a guaranteed connection. Everyone has a more important job than me, grumbled James. Nonsense, said Thomas. Everyone knows you're a really useful engine. But James wanted to be an important engine too. Later that day, the fat controller came to see James. You must take coal to all the stations on the island, he boomed. If the fires in the waiting room go out, the passengers will get cold and complain. It's a very important job, he added. You can rely on me, sir, said James proudly. The fat controller left. James was excited. An important job, he said happily. Ha, ah, sniffed Gordon. It's only a load of coal after all. Nonsense, snorted James. I am going to keep the passengers warm. What could be more important than that? And he wished over to the water tower. But there was a queue at the water tank. Come on! He steamed impatiently. I have an important job to do. Wait your turn, bossy boiler, said Thomas. James felt too important to wait, so he didn't. Oh, oh, oh. 
James rushed to the coaling station. He met Edward waiting at a junction. Edward was looking bothered. He had too many jobs and was feeling puffed out. Can you take these sleigh trucks to the quarry? Edward asked. Sorry, Edward, but I can't, puffed James. I've got the most important job on the island. And he chuffed grandly away. James arrived at the coaling station. He buffered up to the coal trucks and was on his way. James was looking forward to delivering his coal. Now I'm useful and important, he chuffed happily. Then there was trouble. James puffed harder and harder. He went faster and faster. Then he began to feel hotter and hotter. I don't feel well, wailed James, and he had to stop. Your water tanks have run dry, his driver told him. We'll have to wait for help. Just then, Edward pulled up beside James. Please, push me to the water tank, pleaded James. I'm sorry, Edward puffed sadly. You wouldn't take my trucks to the quarry and now I'm running late with my passenger train. And Edward steamed away. Edward stopped and told the signalman all about James. The signalman telephoned for help, and soon Salty was on his way. He pulled up alongside James. Why didn't you fill up with water this morning, matey? James told him about the queue at the water tank. I've heard you were too busy to help Edward, too, said Salty. I was in a hurry, protested James. Mine is the most important job on the island. No job is more important than helping another engine, said Salty firmly. And deep down in his boiler, James knew Salty was right. Thanks to Salty, James's water tank was soon filled and he was well on his way. He knew he had to make up for lost time. Then James saw Diesel up ahead. He had broken down and looked unhappy. James wanted to tease him, but then he remembered what Salty had said. No job is more important than helping another engine, he said to himself, and even Diesel is an engine. Come on, Diesel, I'll push you back to the sheds. Pushing diesel and pulling trucks was hard work. At last, James got diesel to the repair yard, but he still had to deliver his coal. The wind blew, and it was getting colder by the minute. James steamed all over the island, delivering coal to the station waiting room. Everyone was pleased to see James. Thanks to him, they were all kept toasty warm. The next morning, the Fat Controller came to see James. He knew all about Edward's trucks and James running out of water. I'm sorry, sir, said James. I put my own job first. But you did learn your lesson and you helped Diesel, the Fat Controller boomed cheerfully, and you delivered your call on time. You, James, are a really useful engine. James nearly burst with pride. Thank you, sir, he said. Being really useful was better than feeling important. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island 
also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It had been a stormy night on the island of Sodor. Telegraph poles had blown down. Tiles had been blown off the station roofs. And branches had fallen onto the lines. All over the island, the storm had made a terrible mess. The fat controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. The storm has caused confusion and delay, he boomed. So you must all be really useful engines. I'll be the most useful engine, boasted James. No, I will, sniffed Gordon. I'm the fastest. I'll do the most journeys. Thomas hoped he could finish his special as quickly as possible. He wanted to do the most journeys and be the most useful engine of all. Soon all the engines were steaming away from Tidmouth sheds. James went to Knapford Yard to pick up the workmen. Gordon went to the goods yard to collect telegraph poles. Toby trundled to collect new roof tiles. And Thomas steamed over to Marron Station. Farmer McCall was waiting for Thomas. Next to him were boxes and boxes of newly laid eggs. These fresh eggs are needed across the island, said Farmer McCall. The station staff quickly loaded Thomas's trucks with the eggs. And Thomas was raring to go. My eggs must be delivered safely, said Farmer McCall. So I am coming to make sure you go slowly and carefully. Slowly, wished Thomas sadly. He wanted to finish his job quickly and make lots of journeys. Thomas gave one sad toot of his whistle and slowly pulled away. Thomas trundled on. He huffed and puffed as gently as he could. Thomas had to stop at a crossing. Gordon steamed by. Fastest and best, he chirruped. Gordon looked very happy. Thomas felt very sad. Thomas pulled into Maithwaite Station. James was waiting. He was carrying workmen. They were fixing the station house roof. Station staff unloaded four boxes of eggs for the village store. How many journeys have you done? asked James brightly. This is my first, said Thomas. Ha! Ah, huffed James. I'm on my third. I'm as red as a rocket and twice as fast. And he steamed quickly out of the station. Thomas was upset. He wanted to go fast more than ever. Now the eggs were unloaded and Thomas chuffed slowly out of the station. Thomas puffed across the countryside very, very slowly. Then Thomas saw Toby taking on coal in the siding. His trucks were full of roof tiles. Toby was having a wonderful day. I'm on my second journey, he whistled proudly. Thomas was very sad. Toby rushed past him. It made Thomas want to go faster than ever. Even Toby has made more journeys than me, he moaned. It's not fair. I can be fast and careful. 
So Thomas started to speed up. Fast and careful, fast and careful, he huffed happily. But Thomas was going so fast he wasn't being careful. Farmer McCall was worried. Slow down, Thomas, he called. You will break my eggs. But Thomas was going so quickly he didn't hear Farmer McCall. And he didn't slow down. He went even faster. The eggs started to bounce in their boxes. Then Thomas changed lines. It caused a big bump. The eggs were breaking. Thomas came to a junction. He had to slow down. Stop, Thomas, cried Farmer McCall. You have broken my eggs. This time, Thomas did hear Farmer McCall, and he stopped right away. Cinders and ashes, he cried. But Farmer McCall was still cross. Thomas felt bad. I'm sorry, he whistled. I just wanted to be really useful. Farmer McCall checked his eggs. Luckily, only a few were broken. Now Thomas knew he had to go slowly, so he pulled away as gently as he could. Thomas headed for Brendam Docks. Suddenly he heard an impatient toot. James was behind him. He blew his whistle loudly, but Thomas knew he couldn't speed up. Sometimes going slowly can be just as important as going fast, said Thomas, and he puffed carefully on. That evening, the fat controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. He looked very pleased. You have all worked hard and been really useful engines, he said proudly. The engines were very happy, except for Thomas. He was thinking about the broken eggs. I only made one journey, sir, he said sadly, and I broke Farmer McCall's eggs. But most of the eggs were delivered safely, boomed the fat controller. Farmer McCall gave the broken ones to me, and I love having scrambled eggs for my tea. You, Thomas, he added, are a really useful engine. Thomas just beamed. <laughs> The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that? puffing down the track. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Toby is a steam tram. He looks very different from the other engines. He is square and his body is made of wood. Toby isn't as strong as the other engines, but he always tries his hardest. One morning, Toby was delivering some milk trucks. He puffed across the island and up Gordon's Hill. Gordon's Hill was very steep. Toby puffed hard. It was a long climb. Just then, Gordon arrived at the bottom of the hill. But today the express was heavy, and Gordon had to wait for Edward to help. Bother, huffed Gordon. Soon, Edward puffed to the rescue. He buffered up behind Gordon, Edward pushed and Gordon pulled. At last, the express train started to move.
Toby had finally reached the top of the hill when Gordon puffed past. Slow, coach, Gordon huffed. I'm trying me hardest, gasped Toby. Ah, sniffed Gordon, you're not even a proper engine. This made Toby feel very sad. That night, the Fat Controller came to see Toby. Edward is needed at the docks, the Fat Controller said. You are to work at Wellsworth Yard in his place. But I'll never be able to do Edward's job, Toby cried. He's a proper steam engine. Nonsense, said the Fat Controller. You are one of my engines and you must be useful. Toby was very worried. What if he wasn't useful? The next morning, Toby puffed nervously out of his shed. I hope no one needs pushing up Gordon's Hill, puffed Toby. Toby wished he was a proper steam engine. At last, Toby arrived at Wellsworth Yard. There were lots of trucks and they looked very heavy. I'll never be able to shunt all those. Toby puffed. You can do it, Toby, called Thomas. That made Toby feel much better. Then he started to shunt the trucks. He shunted coal trucks for Henry and sleigh trucks for Donald. He even shunted fruit and vegetable trucks for Douglas. Maybe I can do it, Toby chuffed. But then Gordon puffed past. He was pulling the express with lots of coaches. Toby watched as Gordon puffed towards the hill. Gordon puffed with all his might. But once again, the express was too heavy. Gordon was stuck. Bother, he huffed. Gordon's driver called the yard manager. And the yard manager came to see Toby. You need to push Gordon to the top of the hill, the yard manager said. Yes, sir, groaned Toby. But Gordon looks much too heavy for me to push. Toby puffed nervously. Don't worry, Thomas called. You can do it, Toby. I'll do me best, he puffed. And he chuffed off to Gordon's hill. When Gordon heard that Toby was coming, he was very cross. Toby's only a steam tram, Gordon huffed. He will never be able to push me up the hill. Toby buffered up behind Gordon. Then he pushed with all his might. Gordon didn't move. Is that the best you can do? Gordon snorted. They should have sent a proper engine. Toby was about to give up. But then he remembered what Thomas had said. I can do it, I can do it, Toby panted. Toby pushed harder and harder. Suddenly, Gordon's wheels started to move. Toby kept pushing. His engines roared and his axles ached. Gordon moved slowly up the hill. When Percy saw Toby pushing, he blew his whistle with excitement. You can do it, Toby, go on, cried Percy. Toby huffed and puffed and chuffed, but at last he pushed Gordon right to the top of the hill. Gordon was impressed. Now his express would run on time. Toby was tired, but he was very proud. I did it, he puffed excitedly. 
That night, the Fat Controller came to see Toby. Today you wear a very useful engine indeed, he said. Thank you, sir, Toby chuffed. And even though Toby was a steam tram, he felt like a proper engine after all. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a windy day on the island of Sodor. Trees were blown, leaves were scattered, and the fat controller's hat flew away. The engines were looking forward to the annual Sodor flower show. At Tidmouth Sheds, the fat controller had news of an important special. It must get to Maithwaite Station before the world-famous opera singer Alicia Botti arrives, he boomed. Alicia Botti was coming to open the flower show. The engines were very excited. They all wanted to collect the special, but the fat controller gave the job to Percy. Percy was delighted. But after the fat controller left, Gordon and James were sniffy. It can't be that special, boasted Gordon, or the Fat Controller would have sent me. Oh, me, added James. A red engine would be just the thing. Percy wondered what the special could be. He steamed out of Tidmouth sheds as fast as he could. Percy arrived at Brendam Docks, just as Cranky unloaded his special. Percy was disappointed to see it was a roll of carpet. What's so special about a carpet? He wished gloomily. Maybe it's a magic carpet, said Salty. I've heard tell of them that can fly. Do you know any magic words? said Salty. You mean like please? asked Percy hopefully. No, Percy, said Salty. Other magic words like a presto, hocus pocus, and abracadabra. Cranky had lowered the carpet onto Percy's flatbed. It doesn't look very magic, said Percy sadly. But as Percy puffed away, the carpet unrolled as if by magic. Percy puffed as quickly as he could. He had to stop at a junction. Gordon was waiting there. When Gordon saw what Percy's special was, he sniffed louder than ever. A carpet? No wonder the Fat Controller gave the job to a small engine. Just then, the wind whistled and whirled, and the carpet flew into the air. Look, Percy cried, it is a magic carpet. It can fly. That's not magic snorted Gordon. That's just the wind. Murdoch passed by pulling a long train. And the carpet suddenly dropped onto one of his trucks. It is a magic carpet, wailed Percy. And it's going without me. Percy chased after Murdoch. Wait for me, he cried. Please, wait. But Murdoch didn't hear Percy. Murdoch passed through Marin Station. James was taking on passengers. Help! Percy cried. Murdoch has got my magic carpet. 
There's no such thing as a magic carpet. Off, James. Just then, the carpet lifted off Murdoch's truck and glided onto Toby's roof. See? cried Percy. It is magic. It can fly. Percy raced after Toby. Until finally, Toby pulled into Calsthorpe Station. Percy pulled in as fast as he could. Wait! cried Percy. And Toby didn't move, but the carpet did. It flew off Toby and landed on the tracks. Help! cried Percy. My magic carpet! Gordon was even less impressed than before. Still trying to make your little job look important, he grumbled. Then there was trouble. Thomas was coming and he was on the same track as the carpet. So Percy and Gordon blew their whistles as loud as they could. But Thomas couldn't stop in time. I'll say a magic word, cried Percy. Hey, presto! Hocus pocus! Abracadabra! He cried, but the carpet didn't move. Please! Puffed Percy, hopefully. Suddenly, the wind whistled and the carpet flapped. It lifted off the tracks and fluttered onto Percy's flatbed. It is magic, gasped Gordon. And I'm going to be late, puffed Percy. Percy's driver had tied the carpet down and Percy steamed off as fast as he could. Percy puffed in to Maithwaite Station. The fat controller was waiting for him. Percy told him about the magic carpet. It tried to get away, he gasped, and caused confusion and delay. The fat controller laughed. Oh, 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 there's no such thing as a magic carpet, he boomed. But you, Percy, are on time and a really useful engine. Percy felt very proud. Soon the carpet was unloaded and put into place. Gordon arrived with Alicia Bottin. And the flower show was an enormous success. And even though the fat controller had said the carpet wasn't magic, Percy and Gordon were not so sure. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a glorious day on the island of Sodor. Villagers, children, even the fat controller was excited. The circus was coming. The engines were thrilled. They loved the circus too. Percy loved the horses. James loved the clowns. Children gathered on the bridges. They were waiting to see the circus pass by. Thomas became more and more excited. Everyone wanted to collect the circus from Brendam Docks. The fat controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. 
he had exciting news for Thomas. Thomas, you are to collect the circus, he boomed. Thomas was very happy. Pulling the circus sounded like wonderful fun. But if there are too many trucks for you to pull, you must share the work with another engine. Percy and James were pleased. Maybe they'd get to pull the circus after all. Thomas puffed over to Brendam Docks. Thomas steamed into the dock. Cranky was unloading the circus. Thomas was amazed. There were trailers and horse boxes, colourful costumes, coaches and flatbeds as far as the eye could see. Thomas was so excited his axles tingled. The acrobats and clowns climbed aboard Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas buffered up to collect the coach. Ah, do you want a wheel there, matey? asked Salty cheerfully. Thomas remembered what the fat controller had said about sharing the work. But the band started playing and everybody was cheering. Thomas thought this was the most wonderful special ever. Even though the train was very heavy, he didn't want to share it. No thank you, Salty, he gasped. I can do it on my own. And Thomas took the biggest puff he could and slowly pulled away. Thomas trundled through the countryside. His pistons pumped and his traction rods rattled. But Thomas didn't notice. He was having far too much fun. Thomas puffed towards Marin Station. He had a wonderful surprise. Passengers and staff waved and cheered as he passed by. The band played on and Thomas blew his whistle in time with the trumpet. Thomas felt very special. Pulling the circus was lots of fun. Thomas stopped by a bridge. Percy was waiting there too. Children waved to Thomas and the circus. Thomas blew his whistle. Percy wanted to join in. Is there anything I can take? Percy asked hopefully. But Thomas wanted to keep all the fun to himself. No, thank you, he gasped. I can do it all on my own. Percy watched Thomas and the circus slowly chuff away. He felt very disappointed. Thomas puffed on. The train started to feel heavier and heavier. His traction rods were rattling more than ever. Thomas stopped at a junction. James was waiting in a siding. James thought the band sounded very jolly. If you want to uncouple some trucks, he said hopefully, I could take them for you. No, thank you, gasped Thomas. I can do it all on my own. He didn't want to miss out on any of the fun. Thomas steamed on, but every huff and every chuff got harder and harder. Thomas passed through the next station, but he was almost out of puff. Thomas wasn't having fun anymore. Then there was trouble. With a horrible creak and a terrible crack, Thomas's traction rods broke. Thomas stopped with a jolt. Suddenly, it was very quiet. Thomas felt very sad. Thomas's driver telephoned for help. Even the performers practicing in the field didn't make Thomas feel better. Thomas wished he had shared the heavy load. Soon, Percy and James arrived. James brought new traction rods and Percy brought hay for the horses. But Thomas still felt miserable. I wish I'd shared the work with you, he said sadly. 
Don't worry, puffed Percy. We can all have fun now, said James cheerfully. And he was right. While Thomas's traction rods were replaced, they all enjoyed watching the circus performers practice. Then, Thomas shared out the trucks. Percy took the horses, James took the performers, then the band started playing. This is fun, puffed Thomas. All three engines blew their whistles and the long and jolly train set off. Later, the friends watched as the big tent was put up. Thank you for helping me, puffed Thomas. Sharing your work makes things much easier, but sharing the fun is the best fun of all. And everyone agreed. Bye.